Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to have you here, isn't it? Well, I'd like to find out how are you doing? How are you doing in the midst of all this chaos? So today, my uh, number one thing that I wanted to connect with you and see is how are you feeling? How are you doing? How is, how is your internal self? What are you, what is going on in your mind? Are you bombarded with uh, anxiety? Are you feeling anxious inside and stressed? Because today's talk is going to be all about you and how I can help you peel away, let go, and some of this uh, feeling anxiety, anxious and uh, feeling overwhelmed. Hi, Bart. How are you? So good to have you here. Of course, uh, I'm using this new system. And I know that some of you are here. Uh, but I am dark. I cannot see who's here, except if you show me with an emoji or show me with, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, if you write something. So today is what? We are June 2nd. We have overcome almost two months. How can we tap to stop anxiety? Well, you know what? Uh, thank you for that question. As I was saying is there are so many who are putting black as uh, going dark. Uh, some people are, have gone dark today. Uh, worry, scared, stress, anxious, all of the above. Exactly. Hi, Ruby John. Thank you for being here. Hi, Sanaz. It's so good to have you all here. Um, I was talking to someone just a few hours ago and they were saying how they feel as if they are in a war zone and how this is affecting them and she is literally going into a panic attack why because she comes from originally from beirut and she came during the uh, she was there during the war and everything so with all this it's affecting her not only uh, mentally but emotionally and you know what all this affects us one thing we don't realize is watching everything on the internet watching uh, everything on our phone and people who are glued to their phone i know there is there is a whole fact that you need to be aware ignorance is no longer a virtue but the fact that if you are glued constantly and being fed with all these images, it's affecting not only you, but if you have children, the way you speak, the way you express, the way everything happens, guess what happens? Your children are looking up to you for safety, for some kind of a control, for being in charge. And the way you react is also going to affect them. It's called the rippling effect. But what is going on as far as what's happening in your body? You know, this is what I do. This is what I work for. And for the last 20 years, I help my clients connect to their core, to tap within themselves, to tap and find out what is triggering them because yes a lot of things that we are seeing and we truly need to be compassionate of what is going on in our world and it's not uh, my my people your people my religion and everything you know when Rodney King happened in 1991 I know there was so much of what is going on. As a matter of fact, uh, it feels like another Rodney King happening, which is people are so um, sick and tired of being suppressed and repressed. All that is oozing out. And a lot of people now 
it's not that era 20 years ago but so many people are coming together and standing up with one another it's called this humanity is being human i know a lot of people are going to say but what about the destructions and the everything you know when something like when a volcano erupts the volcano does not look to see if there is a house down there or there is a, a child there or there is an animal or there is a new flower the volcano erupts and everything the floodgate comes out and the lava comes burning and there's people who go and take pictures of the lava and the burning volcano because they think it's so beautiful but there is an undercurrent that brings that volcano into an eruption and every few years there are certain mountains and hilltops that have the volcanic uh rocks inside that it's literally bubbling that comes to an eruption and there are people who are watching that and see it and it's happening so in a way i think this is what happened and I, I am so sorry exactly what happened to uh, George Floyd. And yes, the people have to be punished. But look at the bigger picture. As I was saying, during the Rodney King, I used to date. Um, and yes, he was the person I was dating. He was a black gentleman, highly successful, uh, highly reputable and well liked and one of the most loving human beings that I know but when this was happening that night we were going to go to a fundraising and when the entire commotion happened he called me and said I'm not coming and my thing was you're already on the road come over and you'll be safe you know he said, the worst place I can be is on the road and for someone not know, especially in your area. Now, I always think that color, religion, where we come from as a background should not matter about who we are. And yet, I myself have been pointed for not speaking properly that i have an accent it's like um where do i come from and i remember when i was in college at pasadena city college oh my god everybody uh was like yes you are uh, very well off you're highly educated because we came from an educated place but the moment iran contra happened it was like anyone who was from Iran was afraid to say, I am from Iran. Because of the segregation, the labeling, and the way that we were being outcasted, and some people got their cars vandalized and everything because they found out that they are from Iran. So is that the similar as to this? It is. It's like being um, when someone robs your car, when you are robbed at home, you feel vandalized. You feel as if this, is, this was not me. I didn't do anything to you. I never said anything to you. So why are you doing it to me? My, my thing to everyone is, what if what if we just sit back for just a moment and not say why is this happening to me and we say what is happening for us because for us is to recognize that each and every one of us in regards with no regard to our background to where we were born what color our skin is, what languages we speak, 
and it doesn't matter what class you are, we're human. And if someone is in the street and is being hurt, as first responders, they don't look to see if you are a, uh, a, a child, if you're a, uh, a woman, if you are what kind of a language you speak, a first responder is there to respond and help you. A nurse is supposed to help you. A doctor is supposed to help you. And human is supposed to help. There's more people caring for animals than they are for their neighbors. And that is truly sad. When did we stop becoming believers? So when I say I help my clients tap within themselves and find the discord, that means there is a miscommunication mentally, physically, emotionally, because when we get stressed, when we are so angry and everything is from inside is heightened, you know what? Our emotions take over and somehow logic goes out the door. It's like crying uh, fire in a movie theater. Everybody wants to get out. They will stomp on each other. Why? Not because there is real fire. They didn't see fire. They just heard fire. If someone has had an experience with fire, the first thing is, how can I safeguard myself? How can I safeguard my loved one? Okay. So automatically, internally, we go into fight flight and there is that freeze point. What is happening? The eruption is there is no more freeze point. We think it, we act it. We do it, we hear it, we respond to it. It's like action, reaction, action, reaction. But if we sit back and look at the bigger picture and globally and hold space and lovingly for one another and be more in tuned with yourself, if there is an anxiety, just breathe and swallow your saliva. And before you shout out something negative, something that it's fearful, that someone else can hear and look at you and duplicate it. Instead of saying, shit, I'm sorry, you can turn around and say, shoot, me, oh my God, I feel so I feel so instead of I can do, instead of lashing out, it's be present. Shocks. This is what I feel. I feel a shock. I feel discord. I feel as if my nerves are shot. What can I do to calm myself? It becomes and starts with you. Calmness and mindfulness, they talk about it. And here's the thing. The first thing is to recognize that your body is reacting, that your emotions may be heightened, and that's a reaction. And if you take a gulp of water and just drink some water, because while you're drinking water, your entire focus, your body is just like a baby who needs milk and is connected to the mother's uh, bosoms. Their entire focus, if they are crying, if they're having tantrum, the moment they have the mother's breast, what happens? Their entire focus goes, that hand, the mouth grabs onto uh, the breast, the nipples, and the hand cuddles it and they are just busy doing this. And I'm not saying for you to focus, become laser focused, that you're not paying attention, is when you feel anxious from the inside and you feel as if you are out of control, 
is for you to laser focus to what is going on inside you. That's how we heal within, is by tapping within to recognize, I am feeling anxious, I am feeling fearful, I am stressed. Why? Because I don't know what's going to happen to my shop. I don't know what's going to happen to this. I look at the destruction and I feel, or I see that and it's triggering something. Just the same as my client called me and she was hyperventilating because she came from such a chaos war zone and sirens all the time and hearing bombing you know what it's not that it was happening in her home but everything she watched and heard was triggering something internally and it was sending signals for her to go into safety because of the trauma that has not healed and memory brings back memories from our childhood or adulthood it doesn't matter the same as the ones who are first responders the ones who go to war the ones who are in the military those are the ones who are constantly impacted and how do they find the means to heal is to recognize what is setting me off what is pushing my buttons the things that i see is that really affecting me right here right now because that is the truth that is the reality the reality is happening in our cities the reality is for us to have compassion for the reason it is happening. The reality is also to safeguard yourself and your family and your children. Yes. But recognizing that all this, it's happening for us. So we can all show up and stand up for one another. Someone said this coronavirus being at home was the best thing for their family. Yes, there is a lot of negativity that happened and yet it was the best thing for their family. It brought their family together. They had dinner, sitting dinner with each other. So when we feel things are happening to us and we show up for ourselves and say yes i believe in god i have faith there is a trust and truly trust you have to protect yourself by all means do so you have to have cameras you have to have any kind of a means to protect yourself do so But at the same time, have the belief, not only in the higher power, if you're not with, uh, in faith, I work with faith-based, I work with spirituality, I work with the universe, it doesn't matter. I work with humanity. And being human is the same way as the, uh, when it's a uh, uh, summer, uh, I mean, Christmas time and everything and I go from shelter to shelter or I take uh, blankets to the homeless and I have taken pictures with the homeless giving them because they wanted to have a moment and be on Facebook being live you know what he's another human being he's another human being she's another human being who was Magdalena to Jesus? So who are we to cast the stone, right? And I don't mean this to be become biblical. 
My grandmother read the Bible three times in her life from A to Z. And she would say the things, the destructions that are in the Bible. And yet there is so much good messages in the Bible. And I think that's exactly what who we are as human beings. We have the good, we have the bad, we have the wrongs. There is no perfect person, none of us. So when we are here to say the black, the white, I say the white and the black, the yin, the yang. Because in all darkness, when we think about the yin, yin, uh, message the harmony harmony is like a seesaw up and down i cannot be on a seesaw and play in any uh schoolyard unless i have someone with me so we can do this right you cannot be on a seesaw on your own you need something to balance you off. And then when you start doing this, that's when pleasure and play come. The harmony, when we look at that, is to see that there is a white dot in that black. And there is a black dot in the white section. And how I interpret it is that there is nothing in life that it's pure goodness and white and sacred because we all have a dark spot you may call it shadow you may call it fear you may call it doubt and there's even in the darkest moments in our life even the ones who have gone through a lot of abuse there's that white there's that goodness there's that faith and belief and hope because they can't be all bad. So in life, how we create this harmony is to recognize it's called humanity. <coughs> so summertime when I go and spend hours and hours in the sun, I go dark very much. <clears throat> I grew up in a house, <clears throat> excuse me, that I, being an Armenian, my grandmother was from the genocide. I am core Armenian, true blood Armenian in one area of my home and my uh, generational lineage because you can't be more Armenian than having your grandmother a part of the genocide and everything and live to tell the history, to tell everything and still remain hopeful and say, never ever forget where you come from, but do not live with hatred. And then for my mother to marry a Persian who his generational lineage was Persian, Islam. And for him to come and they married in a Catholic church and he converted. And so many of them still knew my father as Persian. So when someone asks me, who am I? I say, I'm a Persian Armenian. That means I am a mutt and I honor both. And I grew up in a Catholic school and being a Catholic, but does that mean I am all Catholic? No, I'm so spiritual. In my office, you will have the Kuan Yin, you will have the Buddha, you will see cross, you will see, uh, you. You will see everything. Why? Because I am not here to segregate my client by who they are, but what they come in for. So they remember who they are as a human being, as a person who is living on this earth. 
we all change. We change hair color. Nowadays, you can change the color of your eyes. We do all kinds of change to our body. And everyone's body belongs to them. Who am I to say what's supposed to be and who you're supposed to be? But what I do is I help you heal within. So if there is a discord physically, mentally, emotionally, if you're holding on to burdens and overwhelm and anxiety and fears and phobias, and doesn't matter. And if it's no longer serving you is what I help you peel away. So today, what you see in justice, stand up. Express lovingly, kindly, not lashing out. Because we also have to remember, there's always someone ready to lash out at you for something they don't like about you. So, um, I, I was asked many years ago if uh, I work with gay people. And I said, no, I don't work with gay people. I work with people. What do you do in your bedroom? What do you do in your personal life? It doesn't matter to me. But what you come in here for matters. I have worked with judges, attorneys, doctors, pharmacist that have an internal need, desire, self-esteem, or there is something that they need to shift and heal. That's what they come in here for. And titles don't mean anything. And it doesn't matter if you are a PhD or you are a you know what? It doesn't matter. A UPS driver, a male person, it doesn't matter. I come from the legal world, from the corporate world, to doing what I do. And there's times that someone will say, how is it that you are not everywhere? Because now I'm helping the ones who are in need. Let's peel away. Let's debunk self-doubt because when we lash out, that means there is an internal inner confidence or the self-esteem, the value and worth. If we feel good about ourselves, we become more appreciative and loving. So, Today, all I ask for is for us to stand up together. And I thank up to all the first responders because there is bad and there is good in all businesses, in everyone who is doing service. So in my community, I can say there's people who say this about the community. We're the first people who segregate ourselves. And we say, where are you from? So I can labelize you. And it's not necessarily to judge you and labelize you. It's because the same way as I say, people are not judging you. They need to compartmentalize it so they figure out where they stand with you is like if I can put you in this box or in this category then I know how to deal with that if I know which uh region you're coming from even the English have that it's a class uh barrier it's like are you the upper enchilance lord 
or are you in the higher echelons or are you just one of the regulars so i know who i am dealing with but if that lord were to be in the elevator with a regular person the elevator stops working do you think titles matter at that moment nothing because we're stuck in that elevator and if I am stuck in that elevator with a scientist who has claustrophobia, guess what? As a clinical hypnotherapist, I can help him calm down and release the fear and the phobic reaction, reaction, and I'm not saying forever, but the reaction that he can feel calm and breathe. And it doesn't matter if it takes five minutes being in the elevator or half an hour until help arrives. Our labels, our titles will mean nothing except what I can serve that person with. I hope this makes sense. Cut this and we will all bleed the same. So. I'm going to look and see if there is any thoughts, ideas. Oh, I have a few Armenians too. You have a few Armen Armenians. You mean Armenian friends. You are welcome. Um, Persians are amazing. They are, especially their food, right? Uh, hi, Daryl. Yes, this virus gave us a chance to breed and spend a lot of quality time for our loved ones. We are no longer robots and no longer live by the schedules that are set for each other exactly so there's always the good if we look for it just like a baby that is being born that for nine months is being cuddled and cushioned in this beautiful protective halo this cocoon i like to call it at the time of birthing has to come and be pushed that's what the mother screams is the pushing and everything and it is hard that expansion and uh, contraction and everything but coming through just like a butterfly that comes through the chrysalis until that first cry that says i am free sometimes we have to go down to something like this that erupts and the pus is coming out. Now it's time to begin the healing. So thank you for all of you being here. If there is any thoughts of uh, feeling much better, you are welcome. I am here for you. If you want to connect with me, if you want to get jump on a call with me, uh, if you are feeling anxious, if you feel an internal fear, anxiety, that you need more um, understanding what's going on, something is triggering it, maybe from your childhood, maybe something, by all means, give me a call. Uh, as a matter of fact, text me. I'll even send you a relax and unwind a recording for you to listen and tap within and re, uh, re, relax. And so that you calm down, by all means, you can text me at 818-221-2797. And I'll be more than happy to gift you this uh, relaxation uh, gift. It's a hypnotic yes it is a hypnosis and you delve deeper within if you don't want to talk to me and you want to do this on your own at home text me 818-221-2797 i will put the link in there and i will send you a gift i want you to do this for yourself i want you to relax and unwind internally to calm down and know that safeguarding yourself in mind and in body and being more in control of your emotions and your breath 
and what you swallow, saliva, that gives you oxygen and vitality so that you can take care of your loved ones and safeguard them is going to be your best gift to you. Okay? So, if there is any questions, anything that I can say, thank you for the emojis. Thank you for being here. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, by all means, call me. Hi, Annie. Hi, Bart. Hi, Sita John. Hey, Daryl. Man, you and I are going to connect. We need to come and help so many of my folks, your folks. Let's get together uh, next week. Next week is going to be amazing. If you are going to be anywhere, I want you your husband, men, women, I want you all come together, tune in. I'm going to promote this. I've got an incredible, incredible guest by the name of Robert Hall. And we're going to be talking about how men suppress emotions and how can we become more in connection, in contact with our emotions of what's happening and how men constantly have to be the man of the house and disregard what is going on internally. Because I work with men and women. It doesn't matter emotions, fears, phobias, self-esteem, trauma happens to all. No segregation, not even in sex. So sex, I mean, who we are not necessarily sex, but even that has a lot to do with what we think, what we feel, and thus, right? So, yes, I can be playful too. I look forward to connecting with you and being here for you. I hold space for you as a whole, not only your issues. My name is Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist. By all means, may God bless you and the universal light surround you.